Next one up, uh, Alla Savolainen runs a Red Sky Yachts in Kotka, an incredibly uh, special place where some of the boats are born and others are born again. And we all know the magic restora restorations of the 6 meter gin and the 12 meter blue marlin, both are the true works of art. Less known to the outside world are the launch designed and built by Allan. They merge traditional lines with modern hydrodynamic thinking and they are ridiculously pretty too. Today, Alan and John will talk about his latest launch, the modern international six meter, which he designed and built. Oiva is the name Henrik Andersen gave to his six meter. The rest is the product of Alan and his typical way of thinking within the rule, but outside the box. The one question nobody here can answer is if she's fast, but let's see what guys will come up. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, let me just see. Okay, do we have, do we have a boat up there or? <laughs> no, yeah, you said ah, it's gonna you. be a <laughs> fireside chat. <laughs> that was it, sorry. <laughs> hey, um, <clears throat> Alan, here we have uh, uh, Evelina. Um, could, could you introduce us to the, to the crew? Uh, who, who are they and, and, and who came up with the idea to? Okay, well, we don't see them all here. I don't know why, but uh, yeah. I can see them. There is uh, Chris Winter from, from left to right. Chris Winter is our tactician. Uh, Henrik Andersen is the helmsman and the owner. Ja Jakob Kranquist uh, is um, a four deck guy and a Genoa trimmer. Uh, Robert Newberry is a uh, uh, mainsail trimmer and a spinnaker trimmer and uh, and then there is me and I I work the piano. Okay. Who 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 came up with the idea to build a, a new six? I mean, well, Evelina is also a six meter and yeah. we were sailing together and and uh, it was Henrik who came up the, with this idea. He started talking about the next the new six meter that Alan is gonna design and build where everything is just that much little bit better and <laughs> oh that came up too <laughs> fast too but fast but that's what's but gonna that, <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's, it's gonna be a it was like a joke to me yeah uh, and and this uh, subject kept coming up every now and then and then uh, something more important came up like a five minute warning signal or approaching the dock too fast or free beer or whatever <laughs> and then it went away yeah. but it must have not been a joke because one day Henrik came to to yard in in Kotka and said that w I have decided that we are gonna build a new six meter and you are gonna design it <laughs> and then this was the it was supposed to that be was like, one. Yeah, that's like that. Uh, my, my mistake. I hope it's the last one. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was totally calm. I, I hold hold my uh, cool and and but in inside there was a little kid yelling that <laughs> you want me to do what? <laughs> and uh, that's my grandson, by the way. <laughs> so. Yeah, I felt like that, but I, I told him that uh, I have to think about it because it's, it's, a, it's a really big thing to me, it is. And I said that I, I want to think about it overnight, but I will give you the answer tomorrow. And I thought about it, I decided that I, I want to do about it, do it. And then later I realized that I should have thought longer because that was the sleeping became much harder after that <laughs> <laughs> promise <Yeah>. and, <laughs> and because there <clears throat> there is no limit what is good enough you, if you know if, if if you can make it better you have to make it better and you keep thinking like this like it's endless cycle and when you reach the where you just don't know how to make it better there is still doubt and that when you have nothing else to think you keep thinking about yeah. that yeah. Yeah, 
So. But so, but but where, so where where do where do we start? I mean, what 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 was the starting point of the of the design? Yeah, well, numbers. Numbers. People think uh, it's a very common question when 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 we start talking about this new boat that okay, is it gonna be light wind boat or heavy wind boat? But and it used to be like that. The boats were designed uh, for one season, and the main <coughs> main event of the season <coughs> and the local conditions determined the, the design goals. But it's not like that these days. These boats sail everywhere in different conditions, and uh, so I I I took this numbers and I kind of target into the middle of the fleet, so by numbers it's very average boat, but I hope it's fast. Yeah, well, you, you're basically trying to get, if, if, and again, I think like what Alan said, in the past it was normal if, you know, if the next Olympics were in Kiel, you design a heavy weather boat, the next one is in Rome, you know, you build a new one for the conditions that you would expect there. Um, you know, at the moment, we're not building a new six meter every year for every championship. So, hey, um, you, you need to find that common ground so that at least the boat will perform. Yeah, or exactly. Be, be in the money if possible. OK, so here, here's Evelina. That, that, you know, that's that's your, your the boat that you've been racing so far. What, how, how different was, was Oiva going to be from Evelina? What, what, what are the, the big changes or yeah. other changes? Well. Oiva was designed by Peter Norlin in late 80s. Uh, the boat was built, launched 1995, but uh, rumor has it that Peter Norlin didn't design new six meter. So this was like something that he just uh, designed before and gave the drawings to, to a boat builder in Sweden and 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 then uh, that that's basically where the de the the development stopped because no new boats were w built anymore and and uh, so then 95 was the last boat built to modern class and but the development didn't really stop because there was new keels and rudders and rigs yeah. built to to existing boats yeah, really so what's the different is is the the hull shape i i wanted to do the giant boat yeah. which is the very very different uh and well this is a not very good <laughs> picture of the giant but but anyways this this was part of my study the to the one thing that China does is it makes the waterline longer, and but the rule is written so that uh, that the waterline, when you heal the boat, the rule is written so it restrains the, the, the shape, the development that it, because it, the longer the waterline is, the, the the faster they say the boat is, but it's it's not all that simple, but it's my reason why I wanted <coughs> to have a giant and that's the biggest difference in, in between o Oiva and Evelyn yeah. and, uh, and I also wanted to design the boat that kind of knows itself how to sail it goes through the water balanced so the job for the crew is try not to slow it down <laughs> and let the boat <laughs> win the race <laughs> and my Thinking here, and why I wanted to show this picture is that when the boat heals and and these these wings or what you call it is in this boat we don't call them wings, but it's it's a very complicated trim tap assembly. The you, when a boat heals, you expose those wings and the whole lateral plane area center of that moves aft a little bit counteracts the weather helm that happens when the boat heals and that kind of thinking that I, I want the boat to be self-driving but of course it's not that simple well yeah 
tough, tough on the crew if their only job is to not slow her down. But yeah. <laughs> so, so um, if we uh, if we go into the design process, um, um, what what surprised me anyway is when when you, that that you designed her sort of the old, the, the old fashioned way on a half model. And so, if if you look at at how any yacht design or meter boat design starts. Is is you know you determine a waterline length which which came out of the uh, of, of the matrix we looked at you look at what the displacement you're looking at which is linked to waterline length you know you figure out a prismatic coefficient draw a midship section um, there's really no difference whether you're d designing on a drawing board or on a half model or a computer those are the starting points but what what made you decide for going for a half model rather than you know pencil and paper or a computer. Well, first, I, I would like to t tell that that was exactly, you know, how I, I approached. We have the wa waterline length and, yeah. and, and the midship section and then the rest follows. But I, I guess I'm just old fashioned, old, old school. And this is pretty much the only thing that it qualifies as a classic is me and my methods. Yeah. <laughs> this is new boat. That, that was your ticket to the symposium. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I did. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think in the I I I I get it. I mean, I I was able to touch the model and it's actually when you look at it there's something different from a drawing a line and just going over that with your hand and and we we talked about it earlier is if you look at you know, Hereshoff, uh, the one who checked the designs for Mr. Hereshoff was mm. his brother who was blind. And he would sign off on them after he actually checked them just based on feel. And then won the America's Cup six times. Not bad. Yeah, but I, I want to create the shapes by hand and, yeah. and while doing it, it kind of... that That's where I, I really... The work I really enjoy. It, it doesn't have to be half model, but just shaping the wood and and create the shapes and and I oh, very often get this state of flow that that uh, some people talk about it but that's the closest that I can relate to that that uh, idea when when I'm working like that it's when the time disappears and I can keep going you know uh, hours with nothing else in mind yeah. So okay. So we we have we have the half model. Um, you know, you use the pantograph. Um, then then what what's next? How do you or who is that? That's is that that's Villa, who your son, who's who's plugging yeah. it in the computer. Yeah. So that. Yeah, he he is there. Uh, it's it's a great pleasure to work with him. I never dreamt. You know, we we never had as much fun. Well, not really. <laughs> I had to make him d do things all over again, and uh, I I like to think that there must be more mouse clicks in this boat than there is rivets in Eiffel Tower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, and without me, it would be only half, I guess. But but I made him do things o over and over again till I was satisfied. Yeah. So, okay, here, here. So we're now we're we're we've, we've, we've you know you were starting to build the hull. One of the things that struck me, um, you know, you didn't use well, you use wood for the frame setup, but the actual planking is in foam. But it's it's planking in foam. You're actually your your, your foam looks like a piece of wood. It's just foam. Yeah, uh, I'm a wooden boat builder, and I I like to plank the boat. So uh, we <laughs> cut the foam in strips and join them and then we plank the boat yeah. but there is more than just that it's 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 tongue and groove and and we we have this mold with these frames uh sections and and that's kind of self-fairing when when you have that uh, all the the planks join together and and the the whole it's self-fairing process, which which we really wanted to make fair, because if you have to fair it by adding things like uh, fairing compound, it, it 
it adds weight and it's a weight critical thing here. Yeah. Right, so. Okay, so if we look at next slide here, the the hole has been planked. Yeah. Um, why? Why? What? Have we, have we just looking at the count? What was? You got ten ten guys working on 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 the lemons. Why? Why so many? Oh, well, we we wanted to do this the whole outside laminate lamination job in one go, and it's it's critical that when when you do it you have to be able to add all the layers and wet them with resin and and roll the air out and do all that before it starts to cure because the curing process is it's e exothermic process where the generates heat and the heat accelerates the process yeah. and if it gets started before you you are ready it it's it's a bad thing so that's, and I like to talk about this picture a little about the resin is not that bad, but it was a COVID time. So the next guy could be very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> that's why all the protection. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now here, here we've got the deck. Um, you, know, you opted for a female mold and it, it's more, more really, uh, um, you built the deck separately from the hoe. Um, w were the guys actually working at the same time on it, or? Yeah, 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 yeah. So. yeah I don't remember what was going on with the hull. Yeah, the fairing of the hull and, and primer yeah. painting and all that was going on while this deck was being built. Yeah. So we saw that before today, building the deck when the hull was under construction, but that. This is not quite as nice, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but it's a good way, yeah. good way to do it. Okay, so here, here we have the two. We're, uh, we're we're joining the two. That's deck and deck and hull being joined. Yeah, um, and that's the advantage. Obviously, if you build the deck and the hull at the same time, you 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 save. Um, let me have a quick look, and then here we have uh, um, f foils. Um, yeah. Deck, deck and hull are connected and, and you know that that's just part of this of the to-do list. You know, you've got the rig, the foils, you know, rather keel, trim tab and mm. so forth. Um what 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 would you have to say about the foils? And, um, well r rudder is is uh, same as in Evelina, it's Ian Howlett's design. Uh we use that because it it, it was uh available and uh, very much up to date so that it was no need to start from there but uh, the keel is our own own design and there is a lot going on there okay but uh, all right yeah okay we'll, we'll click 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 through on the next so we're now okay oh. so what are we looking at here yeah. We've, we've we've got Sampa breathing in her neck, by the way. Okay, <laughs> so that's uh, that is uh, our trim tab. I just said that it's a okay complicated thing, and uh, I don't think I'm ready to talk about that too much. But we'll see. We are going to sail the boat next week, and uh, well, it's exactly. I think you instructed Sampa that you need to hurry up exactly about the stuff you don't want to talk about. So yeah. that's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, can we do a, a, a quick one on the rig? Yeah, well, the rig is, is, uh, is that's also Jan Howlett's design uh, mast section and it, it's built by uh, all spars in UK. Uh, there is, it's very much similar to Evelina, but the different thing with it is the adjustable force day. Uh, for stay length, but that's that's nothing new in the class. It's it's new to us. Just okay. and, and then I wanted to show you the the mast step moving system and and also that we can uh, let the rig forward going downwind like ten degrees. Yeah. And uh, everything is done by pulling the ropes. There is no hydraulics on board. Yeah, and the next next slide. That was one of the things I was wondering. You, you, a lot of electronics in, not just. And I think the look below deck for me was the one that struck me more. If you look at the jumbo displays, we've seen that all. But 
Um, what, what, what is everything you're measuring? Uh, or what, where are your sensors? Yeah, well, we are measuring four stay tension, yeah. four stay length, uh, mast step position, uh, trim tap angle, rudder angle, uh, trim and heel and all the wind data and uh, the GPS data, speed and uh, direction. <coughs> uh, oh, yeah, and a and, uh, couple other things that I'm not going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, the, 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 the rumor has it that, 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 that uh, Alan actually installed what they call an HPL, and, and I think you all know what an HPL is. It's a happy passenger log, and it reads one knot more than you're actually doing. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. All right. Um, okay, so here, here's Oiva coming out of the shed. It uh, gives you an idea on the profile. I mean, uh, um, I don't know, I was supposed to give you a 10 minute talk just about this photograph, but we're, we're, we're running out of time. But for me, it, it's it ex exceptional. Um, here's this next one. Um, this is out of the shed and the rig is on. Would you, would you like to add anything here or shall we click on? Well, I just want to tell that this is the moment where all the doubt comes back if you've been too busy of thinking about it but then then you know it's the moment of truth that yeah. you hoist the sail is it go forward backwards or maybe down <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yeah. yeah well she, she actually went forward that's 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 something yeah so, yeah this is a picture taken by tani simberi she's here somewhere i don't know We'll have a quick look below deck. Yeah, I wanted to show this so that uh, there is a little bit of industrial design involved also, not just hull design, but uh, every little thing that you see in this picture uh, is, is, is there for reason and in, in just r on that right spot for reason. And uh, I, 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 I can tell that uh, every hole I drilled or we drilled uh, well first we think that uh, should we drill or would it be better if it we move it three millimeters or something but you know everything is made to look like something and uh, you, you have to be in control as a designer if you want them to look yeah. like something so and and at some point you just need to make a decision yeah um Hey, and on on the on the next slide, um, you know, we're looking at measurement. Yeah. Um, I mean, I recall from my meter boat projects when we, you know, first time you get measured on a modern boat, it is, it is, you know, the first really nerve-wracking day for me. The second one is, you know, on the dock walking to the first race. But, you know, the measurement, it, it's it's beyond the talk right now. But but the the whatever it it really tells you how how accurate have I built the boat. Am I in the rule, yes or no? And sometimes three or four millimeter tolerance in the way that you build means that you have to reduce sail area or that you cannot rate at all. Mm. So, um, you know, I've ner nerve, r nerve wrecking time. So, hey, and um, where are we now? Let me see, we're going, uh, this is... Yeah, I'll click again, you will see the boat. Ah, okay. Boat is Yeah, we're off on another adventure here. Going someplace with palm trees. We're going someplace with palm trees. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. A boat is is uh, has a arrived in Palma this morning, and I I assume that there is, it's launched and and massed up, and and ready to sail when I get there in Monday. Okay. And then. Brick Chris having pina colada while you're sweating on stage. Yeah, yeah that's a <laughs> click again so that <laughs> starts. Uh, okay. So that is the boat sailing. That's the tests we did in, in the fall. Looks um, looks looks super clean. Eh? I mean, whatever way you look at the wake, if that's not a so clean, it's not it's clean. from the power bo yeah. boat next to it. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But if that's not a clean wake, I don't know. 
All right. Oh, good. Hey, <laughs> that's it. And going forward. Hey, thank you. Good. All right. Good. Thank you.